So the case for this video uh, is going to be Ray versus William G. Harris and Rose Incorporated. Uh, this case deals with sub subjective versus objective contract theory. Subjective contract theory states that the contract is not exactly what's on paper, but it's what was agreed to in the minds of the two parties. Objective theory states that what's on paper is the contract. Subjective theory has its merits in the sense of it makes sure that nobody can sign into a contract they didn't actually need to agree to. Objective theory makes it so that you can't back out of a contract by lying and saying this is what I assumed when it was not correct. So in this case, a construction corporation agreed to put forward an estimation for the construction of a house, and then that ultimately evolved into a bid that was then signed by both parties. However, the contract that was ultimately signed was not the one that had been sent by the construction company to the uh, plaintiff, but the one that the plaintiff's lawyer had sent back to them, which had been modified, including a change to the specifications, but both parties signed it. Now, in the contract, it refers to a five-page specifications that was made by the lawyer, whereas in their mind, it referred to the three-page specification that they had drawn up. Now, again, these are two separate documents that were not actually connected to the contract, but are part of the contract in the sense that they are referred to by the contract. And the contract was clear that it was the five-page specifications. However, the uh, company did not want to build those specifications after they realized what they had, what the specifications were. Um, the Rays filed suit and claimed that they wanted them to make up the difference, uh, whatever it would cost to go to a different company. Uh, and they did. They were forced to pay the excess costs, uh, the, co the construction company, because they agreed to do what was on the paper. Um, now, we should ask a question, why do they have to pay money rather than just build the house? That's called specific performance, and courts in common law, which is essentially any English-speaking jurisdiction, are very, very hesitant to uh, push specific performance for a lot of reasons, one of which being pretty simply that if someone doesn't want to do something, it's going to be very inconvenient to make them do it. Whereas making someone pay money is usually easier in the sense of making them do it is physically easier. Accessing your assets is usually easier than, you know, forcing a company to do all the work on a house. So generally speaking, uh, specific performance is avoided by common law courts.